there, welcome back. If we haven't met yet, my name is Tiffany. I'm a Washington realtor who has a love for creating beautiful spaces on a budget. And today I'm headed off to my favorite place to help do just that, the Goodwill Outlet or the Goodwill Bins. As usual, I'll be searching for home decor items. If I come away with any projects, I'll show you what I did with those. I'll show you how I might style some of the items. And as always, in the end, I will share exactly how much I spent. Thank you so much for joining me here. Hope you enjoy. And welcome to the Goodwill Outlet. If you've never been before, the way this works is they bring out items in categorized bins and you dig through, you pick what you want and you pay by the pound. I like to grab one of those big rolling bins that you saw there because I know I'm going to be filling it up. Each location does things a little different. Some of them rotate out the bins throughout the day. So every hour or so, they'll bring out a couple of rows of bins and everyone lines up and waits until they say shop and then everyone digs in. Again, this varies from store to store, but some locations will charge you a flat fee for heavier items. So if you find a really heavy item, just ask and they may charge you a flat rate. These I would have picked up if I had found all four of them. That fourth may have been hiding in there somewhere, but at the outlet, sometimes it's challenging to find full sets. And this here definitely interested me. I considered converting this into some sort of a little coffee table or desk or something like that. But after looking at it for a while, I decided the condition was just a bit too rough for me.
I thought this was a really nice clock for $9.99. This mirror at $12.99, I think with a little makeover, it could be quite a statement piece. My first find of today was this basket. This is originally from Ikea and it is currently selling for $30. It does show some signs of wear, but I think it's still a really nice usable basket. And this green knit throw blanket here is a Studio McGee blanket from Target. And this is no longer in stock, but it looked like it originally sold between $30 and $35. This tray caught my eye with those gold handles and it was a little oversized. It was longer than most trays and I wanted to see what I could do with this. I contemplated taking those handles off, but there was a nice velvet lining on the bottom of this. When I peeled it back, there was another layer of something else. So I would have had to have deconstructed it quite a bit in order to get those handles off and back on. So I decided to just go ahead and take some painter's tape and tape them off. Here I'm using a primer and this is a gray primer. And here I'm using bare spray paint. This is in the color black evergreen. Here's a look back at the before and here's the after. I feel like that gold up against that dark green color just really pops and makes this look a lot more high end. Next, I picked up this hinged antique wooden box. This is something I would add to a room to add just a little extra storage, but also I think it has so much character. Next, I picked up this sign here. It did have some damage on it, but what I was really drawn to here was the frame. I took a quick trip to Home Depot and picked up this reversible chalkboard slash whiteboard. And here I'm using that sign that I removed as a template This sheet of chalkboard slash dry erase board was quite large, so it's nice that I'll have extra materials for future projects.
there were some little staples left in the frame. So here I'm just removing those to make sure that it will sit flush against that frame there. Ideally, I would have reattached the chalkboard with the same type of tool, but I don't have that tool to shoot those little staples. So I decided to use E6000. If you're not familiar with E6000, it's known for having a very strong bond, but it dries pretty slowly. So I like to use this product in combination with hot glue. Hot glue dries quickly, holds it on there, and then that E6000 offers a strong bond. If you're interested in checking this product out or any other products shown in the video, I will have those linked down in the description below. And I decided to run a bead of hot glue along the back edge just to make it a little extra secure on there. I really liked the design and size and shape of this stand, but it was definitely looking a little rough. So here I decided to just give it a fresh coat of paint. In hindsight, I really should have primed this first, but sometimes I get a little eager to start my projects and I forget to do prep work. And here I'm using my sanding block to distress the edges just a little bit. I always find it so amazing what a difference a fresh coat of paint can make. So when you're out shopping, try to envision what things might look like with a fresh coat of paint on them. This basket here was in very good condition, other than the fact that it was just very misshapen. Thank you to those of you who shared with me that you can soak baskets in water and reshape them. So today I'm giving that a try. Once submerged, I could really feel it softening up pretty quickly. So after about five minutes, I felt like it was ready to go ahead and reshape. Here I've just flipped over a square bucket and put it over that. I let it dry for about 24 hours. Here's a look back at the before and here's the after. I think this turned out great. This is a technique that I will definitely be using in the future. If you find a misshapen basket, I would recommend that you give this a try. Next, I picked up this really nice knit throw blanket, and this had a sticker on it that said Death Salve. And when I got home, I did a little research, and it turns out that that tag is put on items that have been removed from Target stock. They may remove these items because they're off season, they're discontinued, they were returned, it's overstock, or they are clearancing items out. Those items are then sent off to salvage or liquidation stores, or sometimes they are donated to the Goodwill. So I just fixed that little snag there and tossed this in the washing machine and it washed up beautifully.
you may have noticed that I'm a big fan of trays. I think they are great sitting on a desk, on an ottoman, on a counter. I think they're such a great foundation to make groupings of items look intentional. Next, I picked up these faux leaves. I thought they were really nice quality. They're pretty, but they were just a bit bold for me and I wanted to see if I could tone them down a bit. I'm using Rust-Oleum's Warm Caramel Spray here and I'm just lightly spraying these. I did not want full coverage. I still wanted some of those original colors coming through. I'm just shaking them around and misting it over these leaves. Here's a look back at the before and here's the after. Those muted tones are exactly what I was going for. This is going to fit in much better with the aesthetic that I wanted. And these ceramic pumpkins are something that I also picked up in the bins this day. And here I snagged this little pumpkin. It was foam and it was very light, so I know it did not cost much. I thought it was cute, but that top there felt like it made it look a little cheap to me. So I decided to go ahead and remove that. After experimenting with multiple paint colors and techniques, I decided to just go ahead and paint it cream. I then went out in my yard and found a couple of little pieces of wood and I am going to turn one of those into the new stem. Here is that before and here's the after. This is not a drastic change, but this is just to remind you that sometimes it's just those little things, little tweaks that can make a difference. And here's just one more pumpkin that I couldn't pass up. Next, I picked up this backgammon set. Now that case did need to be cleaned, so here I'm using some spray and wash. I then washed it in my sink with soap and water and set it in front of a fan to dry. It didn't come out perfect, but for the purpose of stacking, I was happy with it. And I think this will be a nice piece for layering and adding height. I picked up these florals that will be nice for decorating with in the spring. I thought this basket was really pretty. I really like how there are multiple tones in that basket. I think this would be really nice hanging on a wall or set on a shelf or in a built-in. And because it has so many tones represented there, I feel like it could work in a lot of different spaces. This here, I really don't know what this is. It said that it was originally $35 and it was marked $19.99. Here I am putting a faux candle in there. Here I put some greenery in it. And here I'm taking a cake plate lid and flipping it upside down. And here I set it on a wooden candle holder. If I were going to use it like this, I could drill directly down into that candle holder. If you happen to know what the intended use for that is, I would love to hear from you. 
It's always a little bit of a gamble to pick up items that have a function like a clock. And unfortunately this one was not working, but I was able to order a new mechanism for it for under $6. And my husband was able to calibrate the temperature and humidity. I really liked the texture on this little planter here. I probably will apply a gel stain or something like that to it, but I'm gonna wait until I know what I'm putting in there before I change the color on it. Next, I found several strands of this garland here. Christmas garland has gotten pretty expensive, so when I find nice garland, I like to go ahead and pick it up. This jute or burlap fabric here, I thought would be fun wrapped around the base of a tree. If I don't do that, I'm sure I'll find something else to do with it. And this little reindeer here, I thought was too cute to pass up. These bags here, I have loved having these on hand for wrapping gifts. It is so easy, it saves a lot of time, or even if you want to wrap a gift and slide them into these bags and cinch them up, it's a great way to keep pets or little ones from ripping paper and sneaking a peek at those presents. And that is everything I picked up this day. Now, before we get to the grand total of what I spent, if you enjoyed this video, would you please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Here you'll see that I paid $1.29 per pound for the majority of the items and I paid a flat fee for some of the heavier items. Then down at the bottom there, you'll notice I went back in and picked up a few more items. So my pre-tax total for this day was $62.98. Thank you so much for joining me here. I hope you feel encouraged that you too can create beautiful spaces on a budget. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.